Hello, everyone, and uh, good morning and good afternoon for the folks who are a little bit further to the east of me. Uh, today on our live stream, we're going to be experiencing uh, kind of the nice the majesty that is uh, New Zealand here. As usual, for anybody who likes to kind of fly along with us today, this is a group flight. I'm on the East USA server. To set up an East USA server, in case you're curious, you tap the escape key, come up to the top, and there's this handy-dandy button right here where you can go ahead and dial in the fact that you're in the East USA. And, of course, uh, you want to make sure under your options you're set to all players and not the live players because it's going to be a little bit different depending how you do it. Uh, one thing that I do want to do though is um, these clouds are very pretty, but I want something a little bit more breathtaking because this is a really, really gorgeous area. So I'm actually going to take these up, I'll crank these up just a teeny tiny bit, put a little, little bit of scatter into them. I'm eh, kind of hard to see here, but I guess that'll update itself kind of as we cruise along here. Uh, top, ah, that's the problem. They're too small. Go ahead and make this a little bit wider, bring down the coverage a little bit. There we go. Now we got some nice dramatic clouds. I'm going to raise that just a teeny tiny bit. Again, I'll play with this just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and reduce the time of day just a little bit to make it just a little more dramatic. Yeah, now we're talking. Uh, good evening, John. Okay, so we're going to be operating the Cessna 208 here. This is the new fancy dancy uh, Cessna. This is uh, it's a little nicer than the old one. I mean, if we just pop inside real quick, you can kind of take a look. Pretty much the same thing that you're used to as far as the 208 is here. You know, you've got all your lights here. you got your electronics on this little console on the side. you got the big old black handle here. And of course, you can sit most of your family in this aircraft, which I think is pretty wild. Now, what's kind of a bummer is the little cargo container on the bottom of this thing we can't actually remove, which is kind of a bummer. Good morning. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I want to make sure my mixture is set off. This does not have FADEC on it. We have to kind of do it the old-fashioned way, unfortunately. So now that that's all taken care of, I'm going to pop up to the battery switch. I'm going to click that on. It's going to get all grumpy. Come up top and go ahead and flip on both of my fuel switches. Unfortunately, we have no oxygen, which is going to be problematic during today's flight, as you're going to see. We're going to flip the bolt foo. Ah, let's try that again. Fuel boost pump up to on. And then all we do is we come down to the start option. But before we do that, I want to confirm my blue handle is in the correct position. Uh, good afternoon also. Absolutely. Uh, good eye or something like that. Again, I'm not going to attempt the New Zealand accent, but it will have some fun commentary along the way. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on the starter. Of course, when we do this, we can't see anything. So I'm actually going to turn on my avionics here so we can see how far along we're turning. In the real world, uh, generally you have like this kind of like backup avionics mode so we can study. All right, we're looking to get ourselves up to a few more percentage points, and we're just going to gently bring in the fuel just a little bit. Again, we don't need to jam on it, otherwise uh, you're going to get a fire. So you can see my ITT is coming up pretty darn quickly, and you can just kind of milk this very, very gently. Again, don't touch that throttle, and definitely don't touch that handle. And we should be turning, and we are turning. Nice. I always like to take a couple moments to kind of start it in case anybody's still joining us and they're able to kind of join us in a moment. All right, going to go bring in some more fuel here. Again, we're going to go to the low idle position. On a turbo prop, you have two different idles. Obviously, the low idle is for kind of sitting there on the ground. The high idle is if you need to get revving without actually going ahead and jamming on the throttle control here, which works really, really effectively. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. All right, looking good. Uh, engine started up. I've got a really, really good start. Last thing I need to do is I need to shut off the starter. And I'm going to go ahead and put the fuel boost pump back to normal. Of course, what I did not do is uh, I forgot to turn on the bacon light, which is extremely naughty of me. And you want to make sure that's on because it's the universal symbol for, hey, I'm about to get this thing started. And again, that's this little red light sitting there. All right, let's see what we got today. So I see a few 208s. I see a couple TBMs. Okay, a TBM is going to be a good choice for this particular flight today. You'll have no difficulty. The only problem with the TBM, folks, is you're going going to have to hold off on the gas there because we are not nearly as fast. Okay, with all that being said, uh, normally in the real world, of course, we'd want to call it. Looking at my clock, it says 1130. It is time to get rolling. Now you want to see something cool? Oh, you can't see that bummer. All right, let's do it. Excuse me, sir. I'm about to chop you up into fish food. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. So now there's two ways you can taxi an aircraft like this. You can either use the low idle, high idle option, or if you prefer, you actually have the ability to go ahead. I got to watch that wingtip really carefully here. Oh my, oh my, that's close. Or the other thing you could do is, of course, you could use a regular old throttle to kind of get this thing rolling as well. Either one works fine. Uh, we are uh, November Zulu Whiskey Foxtrot to November Zulu Mike Charlie. All right, let's get going. Uh, Crunchy Bob, I think I remember you from another day. I think I remember Dr. Magic also. Just looking around here, SDO 91. I'm going to go ahead and roll over here. Now, one of the bummers about this particular airport here is if you look really carefully, there actually is no place to actually uh, back taxi or forward taxi here. Hey, I recognize this one over on that side. So I'm just going to kind of cut everybody off. Excuse me, Rick Rocks. Sorry, man. Excuse me. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and pull myself over this direction, kind of head down this way. And again, we're just going to have a little bit of fun with this. 
All right, for uh, Cessna 208, you want to use uh, takeoff flaps, which is going to be at two clicks. Uh, once we do that, they're going to come on down. You can see these flaps are gigantic, which means they're optimized basically for short takeoffs, which is what this thing is meant for. Now, what's really interesting is in the real world, this particular airport actually has a grass runway on this side. So I'm actually going to take off from that just so I can be a little different. Um, so Swire Jacks, I'm going to probably mispronounce that horrifically. I asked a really, really interesting question. Uh, where can you get the delivery? Uh, the good news for that is there's this beautiful pack. If you go on uh, the Google and you type in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, livery pack, there's this uh, basically an awesome curator who does this thing on Discord that basically has all these crazy liveries on it. And trust me, there are a few. All right, so can you see that kind of discolored patch of ground right there? That is going to be where we're going to be taking off from today. I'm going to go ahead and hold that a little bit. Again, I want to give people on my left plenty of room. Oh, yeah, that's, that's definitely not nearly as nice. All right, hold the brakes here for a second here. Make sure everything's looking good. I just want to confirm that I got my flight plan all sorted out. We're going to be going up high today, so I'm going to make sure everything's kind of pre-selected. I'm going to pop this thing all the way up real quick. Uh, what are we going to do? It's going to be about 9,000, and we're going to have to go all the way up to 14,000 to get over Mount Cook today. So it's going to be kind of an interesting flight in that regard. All right, 9,000 looks good. Uh, navigation mode, make sure my CDI is set correctly. I'm going to go set my PFD to make sure I don't need DME. Wind, obviously, option three is the correct option for wind. And we're going to go ahead and check that, check that, check that. We'll go ahead and switch the navigation mode on. Flight director, don't touch the all damper on takeoff. All right, I think we are good to go. I think everybody else is kind of getting them. <laughs> That's an awful lot of Cessna 208s in one place. I think we are a convention. I'm going to take a picture of that uh, just in case I miss my opportunity to do that a little later on. I like this one. That's kind of cool. I was really hoping for a black caps library. Really hoping. That's, again, the uh, national team over here in New Zealand. All right, let's go ahead and do it to it. So we're doing a soft field takeoff here, so do not apply full power until you are rolling. Otherwise, your propeller becomes a lawnmower, which is not desirable. All right, go ahead and check my brakes. Everything looks good. Going to give it a nice, gentle push forward. Again, because we're a turboprop, uh, this thing takes a little while to kind of kick in. I'm just going to apply gentle power, gentle power. Just going to keep pushing this forward. Keep in mind, you have to watch your ITT as well as your torque. And I'll point something out kind of weird in a second. All right, that's feeling pretty good. That's basically peak. All right, don't forget to put your flaps down at least one notch for this takeoff. And off we go. I always like turboprops. They just sound so mad. I did mention we're 1,100 feet up, right? All right, got to give it a very gentle tug. Again, we're not a Cessna 172 here. But with those flaps, at uh, flaps 20, it makes it tremendously simple to get this thing airborne. All right, I'm going to let the nose come down just a tiny bit. And I'm going to bring up that first notch. Uh, those flaps have a lot of drag, so give it a moment to kind of catch up to you. There we go. I'll go ahead and bring up that next notch of flaps. And whoa! Got to get work on that trim. Nice. Now, one of these days, they're going to give us something like a Twin Otter or something like that. That'll be pretty cool. Oh, there goes the TBM. Bye, Dr. Magic. Uh, you're going to be a little bit quicker than us today. All right, flaps are all the way up. I noticed that I'm getting a red light where it says my prop RPM. So I'm going to reduce my RPM by just a teeny tiny bit. Getting a little bit of the good turbulence here. Okay, so here's our first challenge. I'm going to go ahead and uh, wait for the turbulence to kind of balance itself out here. And that's the fact, if you look, we actually have this big lake here. And I'm going to kind of zoom to my side a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. This, hey, it reminds me of Telluride. So this lake here has this kind of weird little island kind of sitting in the middle. We have to basically either go this way, which kind of hang around the back, or if we're feeling a little more lucky, we have to basically go between this mountain range right here. If we go between this mountain range, there's this little tiny land, and we're just going to take a right. Now, for those of you who are basically uh, kind of show-offs, of course, what you could do is you could go right over the top of this mountain. Hey, great. Uh, thanks, Hanno. I appreciate that. That's what I was hoping for. Hey, uh, Peaky Peaky Piku, I feel like I've seen you before. I think that's awesome. All right, let's go ahead and continue climbing. I'm going to do this part of the flight basically by hand here. Let's have a little bit of trim. We are going to have a slightly longer flight than usual today because it's just a little bit further. There's actually, if I recall correctly, there's a very, very small runway on my right. That's uh, one of those things that once you see it, you can see it, but if you can't see it, you're never going to find it kind of a thing. Yeah, there should be a little tiny one over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and level the plane off. And we're basically going to thread the needle between those two uh, major little mountain ranges directly ahead of us. There we go. And again, we have more than enough thrust in this thing to power over the top of those mountains to my right, but I'm just not feeling like doing that today. 
<laughs> so uh, one person points out the fact they're operating in a Diamond 62. You could be able to keep up with us. Uh, the bigger problem you're going to have is when we have to get over Mount Cook, the, um, you're going to be suffering for lack of a turbocharger. All right, see how we're doing behind. Oh my gosh. I see you all found me. Uh, sorry, by the way, for the late start today. Um, I, hopefully everybody got my message ever starting at 1130. Uh, the reason we had to do that, of course, is uh, license renewal. <laughs> I think you know what that's all about if you've ever had to go through that process. All right, going to go level ourselves off already. Oh, man, look at this terrain. Um, it is my lifelong dream to go here, and I'm hoping on my 10th wedding anniversary that I do make it out here. That's actually next year, but... Um, Obviously, pandemic, and uh, it's difficult to plan these things. And of course, they have the opposite seasons as us. So if I go during Christmas, yeah, it's summer, but it's also Christmas. And I think you can imagine exactly what that's going to be like. All right, I'm just relying on good old-fashioned trim here. I'm not going to flip on the autopilot until we have to start climbing. Again, I want to absorb some of these pretty sights on our way up. There we go. And you can see, like I, just like I said, basically have this little island here, and you have to kind of go right through. Of course, we can go over the top here if we wanted to, but it's just kind of neat to kind of zip around here. I'm actually going to lose myself a tiny bit of altitude. And we're going to go ahead and come down. Nice. All right, I'm going to go ahead and change up my RPM a little bit right now and get myself to a cruise RPM. Again, as long as the RPM is in the green, you don't really have to worry too, too much about anything here. Go ahead and knock that down to about 1,800. All you really do with the turbo prop when you uh, reduce the RPM there is you make it less loud. <laughs> ah, Krakenson asked something. Oh, so ISR is uh, pointing out the fact I'm flying over Middle Earth. I was going to make that joke, but like I'm saving it because like there's something you're going to see and you're going to be like, oh, hello. You'll know what I mean when you see it. Uh, Krakenson is asking a little bit about a coordinated flight. I can actually just show you that to you real quick. So when you push the rudder in, I want you to pay very close attention to this little needle right here. I'm going to push it all the way to the left. Do you see how it's shifting to the right? Now, if I release that rudder and come back to the center like this, you'll notice it shifts back to the center. So when that happens, basically what we're doing here is, um, as you can see, uh, we're coming up with a way to slide the plane. Now, if I push my right pedal all the way forward, you'll notice that now it's getting to the left. So the first concept you need to know about coordination is making sure that that line is always centered by pushing your foot, or I should say the rudder, in the direction that is offset. All right, let's go ahead and get my dramatic picture here. Here's the little land bridge right here. Notice it's got the world's teeny tiny, the most dangerous little road here. I'm going to swing this way. There we go. Okay. So I'll continue with that in a second. I just want to finish my turn here. Look at this. Now, I'm uh, not the biggest fan of swimming in cold water. I don't know about you folks, but uh, <laughs> take a look at that. All right, going to go ahead and level my wings up gently here. I'm actually going to shut off navigation mode. I am going to flip on altitude mode. I'm going to turn on my yaw damper now that we're going to get bounced around. And let's go ahead and synchronize my heading. Nice. Okay. So anyway, like I was saying, so uh, when you turn an aircraft, again, this is just answering this guy's question here. Uh, when you lift one of these ailerons, what's going to happen is you're going to create a significant amount of drag on that side of the plane, and you're going to create a significant amount of lift on that side of the plane. Now, the problem is because now you've got something moving at a different speed relative, the drag and lift is actually going to come out of proportion, which is going to go ahead and uh, do one of these. It's going to skid the plane, especially if you use a very, very aggressive aileron. So the concept, uh, thanks Simon, I appreciate that. So um, what's gonna happen is uh, when you turn the plane, you have to push a little bit of rudder into the direction of the turn so that when you do turn, you don't skid. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out my automatic pilot again real quick. So if I jerk my controls real fast, do you see how this slipped this way? Now, if I do the exact same maneuver, but this time I push my foot down, I did a little too hard there. You can see how by using your feet and your ailerons together, which is what I'm doing now, you can keep that little bar perfectly centered. Now, I'm going to say this from experience. In the real plane, you can feel it in your butt when you start skidding around the seat. But in this plane, all you got to know is push the rudder just a little bit forward when you tilt the aileron in a direction and push it a little bit in the opposite direction when you do the opposite aileron. Yeah, just like that. When you first get the hang of it, what's going to happen is you're going to build up a muscle memory of what that feels like so you never have to look down at that display. All right, let's go flip the autopilot back on. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, if I did a full video on that, I'd probably have to actually get a little serious and a little bit graphical. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, I guess I should turn my lights on. There we go. Uh, I might as well turn on the no smoking also. All right, do we have anything dangerous behind us today? I'm just looking ahead. I'll uh, we'll get the Diamond 62. Yeah, awesome. 
Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. Uh, so we're cruising right along, no problem. Basically, we're going to come right up this lake here, and we're going to be taking a right-hand turn. Now, where this is going to get... Yes, that's exactly correct, uh, Kraken Sam. That is exactly correct. So otherwise, yes. And what happens in the real plane is you feel your body being pushed against the opposite side of the turn. And you can fix it just by giving yourself just a teeny tiny bit of that rudder so that you feel centered in the seat. There's actually a brilliant video on, um, if you go on YouTube later, you can watch somebody pouring themselves a drink while doing corkscrews with the airplane because it is perfectly coordinated throughout the entire operation. I don't necessarily recommend that because it gets a little dangerous, but um, I think my dog just discovered uh, somebody walking by there. All right, let's go ahead and build up a little bit of speed here. We're going slow enough as it is. All right, now this is something I find kind of unusual. On the Cessna 208, at least in this version, we have a torque gauge down here, which is from the old Cessna, but clearly I'm uh, tearing the plane a new one. However, when I look at this one, clearly my green arc here is indicating that I've got this awesome. And you can also tell my temperature is okay, and you can tell my uh, RPM is good, too. <laughs> Full throttle of the time, it does the trick. Oh, okay, I'm glad somebody else is leading the way here. Okay, so what we're going to have to do in a minute is we're going to have to climb so we can get over Mount Cook. And uh, one of the most amazing sights you're going to see in just a second is you're going to see where all the mountain melt basically creates this like semi-glaciated effect coming right down here. Basically, you can imagine this whole place was once flooded, you know, that millions of years ago. And over time, everything just kind of dripping and carving. It's just oh, it's so amazing to watch. All right, let's keep going here. All right, let me study my little chart real fast here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom out just a little bit, see how we're doing. Hey, I'm actually not that far off. Unfortunately, there's a mountain in the way of this next waypoint. But I'm noticing that my first waypoint is actually slightly to my left. So I'm actually going to tweak this just a little bit. And that should get us going back in the right direction again. All right, looks pretty good. Again, I don't like to fly autopilot all the time. But I just want to make sure we don't get horribly lost here. Kind of bring it this way. And that should do it pretty good right there. All right, when you see this. So again, like I was saying a minute ago, where all the mountains is kind of dug up and you had big glaciers basically ripping this place a new one. And somebody says, hey, this seems like a perfectly legitimate place to put a farm. So they did it anyway. <laughs> so I just thought that's funny. All right, we can flip back to nav mode. Uh, there's going to be a little teeny tiny airport on our way as we kind of pass around this area here. It's going to be very difficult to see. But basically, if you follow the highway, you're going to see a section of the highway that doesn't quite fit the other ones. All right, we're going to go straight down here. And we are solid. I don't like flying this close to mountains because, again, remember what wind does. If the wind is coming out of the west here, it would come down here and it would push up this side so I get a very strong climb or slash updraft. All right, let the GPS kind of play that. Oh, looks like uh, Ted's uh, figured out how to pass us here. It's all right, Ted. We're going to beat you in the climb over Mount Cook, just so you know. All right. <laughs> yeah, basically. Now, I was going to say, now we're going to make some funny comments about New Zealand here while we uh, get to the quiet part of our trip before we have to do our climb up to 14,000 feet. Um, basically, uh, which we, and one of the neat things is if anybody's fun with Legos or enjoys Legos, a couple years ago, they released a game. I think it was the Lego Movie Game 2. And they brought up the fact that their Middle Ages setting is known as Middle Zealand. So, as in, oh, you can't just fly to Mount Doom, seriously. But um, they call it Middle Zealand, which I just got a kick out of because it's, you know, Middle Earth plus New Zealand because everybody knows that they shot Lord of the Rings in these mountains. Now, interesting thing, not that you need to know this, but uh, the director of Lord of the Rings also made this movie called Dead Alive. And it um, was notorious for using the most amount of fake blood in the history of cinema. And it was uh, pretty funny. So if you want to look up something interesting about Peter Jackson, uh, go, go look up the movie Dead Alive. It was also shot right here in New Zealand. And it's, it's not what you'd expect from the person who did Lord of the Rings. And I always thought that was kind of funny. All right, we're going to kind of scoot this way. I don't see any DHLs today, but look at these mountains. And I think we're right about to cross that funky runway, which is impossible to see. By the way, the reason I gave up the autopilot there is it's going to smack me onto that mountain, and I'm not really a fan of that. Zoom in a little bit. There it is. The world's hardest to spot runway. And feel free to do a quick little touch and go on that. I'm not rocking that one too much. It's a little short for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Toro's got the right idea. Because when we have to start working up Mount Cook, we're going to have to get up to about 14,000 feet to get over the top of it. So it's going to be a bit of a process for us. All right. Again, I'm just kind of navigating this a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and get our altitude pre-selected. 14,000 feet, please. <laughs> this is one of those, like anybody's flown in the Himalayas, which for some reason we haven't done yet. You can hear my uh, mouse wheel kind of working this thing over. Ah, uh, uh, perfect. Okay, good to go. All right, let's take a look at the folks behind us, see how we're doing. Yeah, it looks like we're doing okay today. I think I'm hugging this mountain range a little bit too tightly, but that's okay. There's the runway. 
for anybody who's uh, feeling extremely brave and wants to do a quick touch and go here. My TBM folks will have no difficulty catching us up with this part. Uh, note, that's not the mountain we're looking for. Um, you'll know it when we get around this corner. Oh, yeah, there it is. NZ uh, New Zealand uh, MW. Okay, more stuff about New Zealand. Um, again, uh, New Zealand, uh, they're my favorite cricket team. They're the Black Caps, for those of you guys who are curious. I don't own a lot of sports jerseys, but this is one of the only ones that I do, and that's their uh, cricket jersey from back when they were in the World Cup a couple years ago. Fortunately, they lost to Australia, so that was kind of a bummer. They beat everybody else. Oh, somebody's going for it. <laughs> nice. Now, uh, one of the things that I was looking at the other day, and I'm still debating, is uh, they released some interesting aircraft over at Just Flight. I think uh, one of them was like an F-15 or something like that. Man, is that tempting, especially with VR. But I uh, want we'll to kind of see how that evolves over time. All right, everybody ready to start going up? Do one last check, confirm my RPM looks okay. Apparently it's in 1778, go figure. And we're gonna give just a little bit of power here. And yeah, we don't wanna get too close. Eh, close enough. Getting bounced around pretty good here today. All right. All right, so you can't miss what we're going to see in a minute because it's uh, huge. <laughs> and no, that's not it. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of right rudder here. Fun fact, if you're doing teeny, teeny, tiny corrections with the aircraft in IFR, sometimes it's actually easier to use the rudder to just kind of nudge it rather than grabbing the ailerons. Because remember, every time you grab the ailerons, you create a lot more drag than that little piece of metal in the back called a rudder does. All right. Now, this was a bit of a problem from a uh, flight planning perspective. You can see we're kind of coming up this valley right here. Let's take my head up so you can see it a little bit better. Now, our issue here was, is we got to get over this. And I know the fact that we could probably just power and zip right over the top. But the safer thing to do would be to go around this way. Now, while we're on our way up, of course, like I said, we could pop right through the center of this. We got to think about the ridge we're going to have to basically follow. Come swinging this way. Uh, there's going to be a pretty good gap right here on our right that we could probably get through, but I'd rather get through this valley over on this side. Again, we're not mountain flying today, but we're having a little bit of fun with it. All right, flip around, see how we're all doing. Nope, we haven't lost too many people. Oh, oh, look at that. DHL is insisting on trying to uh, fly a package in this dangerous of an environment. Fine, be that way. All right, I'm just going to kind of cruise along this way a little bit. So again, this is one possibility. If you want to try to head us off at the pass, feel free to take a right there and take a left. For those of you who want to do the dangerous thing with a TBM pilot back there, feel free to go right over the tippy top. The rest of us, we're going to kind of do one of these things just to give us a little bit more protection before we go ripping up towards that Mount Cook there. Again, I'm just using a little bit of action from my feet here. I'm actually not even touching the oak because I don't need to. This thing's really nicely trimmed out right now. Now, imagine how horribly lost you can get in an environment like this. <laughs> All right, checking to make sure that works. Looks good, looks good. Again, we're following the same stream we did before. I'm just amazed that this is in summertime for these folks. And uh, take a look at those mountains. They're still totally covered with snow. And uh, we'll be seeing quite a bit of that in a minute. Um, I have a picture of the flight plan. Also, if you uh, go onto my community page over on YouTube, I actually posted the flight plan directly. I don't have the actual file for the flight plan. This is something I'd enter by hand. It's kind of a pain. If I was a much smarter person, I would have saved it. All right, give myself a little bit of trim here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go around this way, and then we're going to take a right. As soon as we take that right, we're going to have to start picking up a lot of altitude, and you'll see why. Check everybody behind me. Looking pretty good. Hey, Crunchy Bob, welcome back. And I think I've seen CNC General before. Just trying to make out. Okay, this is a behind me. Cool. A little bit longer of a flight today, but it's a little bit more peaceful than uh, when we would try to raid Vegas in stunt planes. Man, that was a bad traffic accident. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh my gosh, could you imagine trying to hike up that? I gotta keep an eye out for eagles carrying hobbits, though. I'm, that's kind of what I'm a little nervous about right here. Uh, call sign is 6-4 uh, red. I th yeah, I'm not gonna adjust that right now. All right, a little bit of turbulence today, but nothing too, too bad. Got my hands on Premier Elements so we can finally stabilize footage. Isn't that going to be naughty? All right, got a crossway point too. Everybody ready to go up? Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. That's fine. There we are. And 
Nice. Okay. So now we're heading down uh, this next set of valleys. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to cross the mountain we're facing up right now. And then we're going to take a nice and gentle left so that we can kind of continue this way. Okay, just kind of keeping an eye on things. Yeah, getting bounced around, but that could just be mountain turbulence. It could be that I forgot to set the weather correctly. You know how it usually goes. Good time to just check to make sure everything's working okay real fast. Give this a gentle push. Interesting thing here is usually at this altitude you start eating into your RPM a little bit, but that's all right. Plenty of fuel on board. That's one of the great things about this aircraft. It's not terribly fast, but it will get you there eventually. Let's take a look at the folks behind me real quick. Ah, it's 208. Do I have anybody liking something silly like a C4? What is this? Can't quite make that out. Bummer. All right, use a little bit of feet. Just checking my uh, coordinates here. I'm making sure everything looks okay. It looks pretty good. I'm going to swing to my left just a little bit. Again, this is just absolutely beautiful countryside. And my understanding is they have pretty good seafood. And the other thing I've heard as well is that in um, Auckland specifically, they make very, very good coffee. So uh, it's definitely something like I said. i got to check that out someday. <laughs> now, this thing's just gentle. I think when we do the airliners, everything's a little sensitive. This one, I feel like you could have used the controls a little bit. We'd be pretty safe. I'm amazed that even though we have this giant propeller, I don't have to use any aileron trim to keep it going in the front line. Now, having not flown one of these in the real world, I can't speak to the reality that that is, but I kind of get this one. Oh, somebody in a C4 did go by. Well, there's a TBM. Yeah, the TBM's not going to have too much difficulty here. The ones you've got to watch out for are the people in uh, like a little stunt plane or something like that. You are simply not going to be able to climb over Mount Cook. Well, you will, but uh, that might not go well. All right, we have to get over the mountain directly ahead of me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. And we're going to get going on a fairly steep climb here. <laughs> uh, Kevin just confirmed the thing with Auckland Coffee. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing my research in advance here. Now, here's an interesting problem. Uh, now that our nose is sitting up here at 12 and a half degrees, we're losing speed like crazy. And you'll notice that my actual climb angle that refers to how what angle I'm climbing at is not 12 and a half degrees. It's actually closer to about eight or nine degrees. So what's actually going to happen here is if I try to continue climbing like this, I'm actually going to go right into the side of the mountain and basically stall the aircraft. So in this case, I should have started climbing a lot sooner. So I'm actually going to bring myself gently to the right so that I don't go smacking into this thing. Again, at any point, I could cheat and just jam the throttles all the way forward. But eh, I have damage turned on. I really don't feel like breaking it. Especially after the last time when I had a really nasty pile up at the uh, Las Vegas Speedway there. Um, so Rakan asked about torque back. Um, this is probably a great time to discuss uh, kind of how turboprops are like flat rated. But I'll give me just a moment to get myself over this mountain range before we start looking at some of the what that actually means. The short version is, is um, all the turboprops are basically designed so that they produce their maximum power at a given altitude greater than sea level. It's called flat rating. So what will happen is, is if you push the throttle all the way forward at sea level, you're producing more horsepower than usually the transmission or the exhaust system can actually accommodate for. As a result, you can do a tremendous amount of damage to something that's very, very, very expensive. So um, we have to actually monitor three sets of engine gauges plus your usual oil pressure. Whoa, getting some uh, ridge bounce there. Plus you have to worry about you know, your oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel pressure, stuff like that. But I'll show you what that looks like in a minute because uh, we're just about to see our destination. Kind of hard to miss. An interesting thing is if we ever fly out in uh, the West Coast, uh, you've got um, like Washington State and Oregon and stuff like that. And they have uh, like Mount Hood, which is not hard to miss it literally just sticks out in the middle of nowhere it's the weirdest weirdest thing all right we can see we're slowly crawling our way up to six grand here i'm gonna pull it trim everything out again i'm actually gonna go ahead and pop the automatic pilot on and it was in altitude mode this whole time automatic pilot mode off <laughs> so if it's on altitude hold mode it's going to basically level off if it's not you should just be able to do pitch hold, which is what it's doing right now. Yeah, pitch hold. So it's going to hold that angle for me, and you can see exactly what I need to do. Okay, what was I saying? Anyway, so basically for a gas turbine, you have three things you have to worry about. You have to worry about the torque, which is how hard you're twisting the propeller. Literally, if you see this, you are bending metal. It's not safe. You have your ITT, which is the temperature between basically the combustor and where the um, uh, not compressor. I always get it backwards. The turbine is. There we go. And then you have your NG, which results in exactly how fast the entire unit is spinning on its own. The other thing you got to worry about to a lesser extent is the actual RPM of the propeller. 
So what happens is as we climb, this engine has to turn faster and, and, and hotter in order to perform the same amount of torque. So what happens is at low altitudes, you're torque limited. At medium altitudes, you're going to be uh, temperature limited. And at high altitudes, you're actually going to be RPM limited. So it's actually very neat how that actually works. The key element for us is as long as we're in the green with all three of those, nothing bad will really happen. All right, I think our next turn is coming up in just a minute. We're going to be taking that left turn, and we're going to be heading over to Mount Cook in just a minute here. Like I said, you will not be able to miss it. It's kind of big. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Fuel is looking good on both sides. A little out of balance, but there's nothing new there ever. Go ahead and level us off in just a minute, and then we're going to be taking our left turn and basically trying to get over the mountain. But, you know, it, we've got to make things a little exciting for us. Continue climbing. Now, an interesting thing that Flight Simulator does not do, and you've heard me complain about this since my first live stream, is this isn't how this works. In the real world, as you climb, your temperature is actually going to start to drop. Usually, temperature and torque are your limits at low altitudes. All right, we're going to go ahead and level off in just a moment. I think 8,500 feet is going to be more than enough until we have to take that big turn in just a minute. There you go. Awesome. Let's see what we have up front here. Ooh, getting everybody a passing. Again, you cannot miss our destination here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mertex. I uh, really, really appreciate that donation there. I'm going to have to remember your name later on, though, so uh, we can go ahead and make sure that this is posted on my next community update. But thank you so much for taking that little chat there. All right. Uh, taking a look over on our left. That looks pretty good. I think we're going to be taking our next turn in just a minute. Go ahead and zoom out. I have a really useful video coming out on Monday, which shows you how you can make these panels pop out of the screen, which I don't know why I didn't do a video on that earlier, because it's pretty awesome. All right, taking a look. This is our destination, folks. So um, everybody's got their copy of the ring, right? Everybody's got a ring. Everybody's got a ring. So remember, we're destroying all the rings. We can't destroy anywhere else. So make sure you have the ring. So if it's the one ring to rule them all, just make sure you have it. Now, fun fact, I've never actually seen the third Lord of the Rings or the second Hobbits movie. So you all have to let me know if that was any good. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. So we're going to take a left. This is at Mount Cook. It's basically chilling right here. Again, look at these amazing vistas. For those of you in VR, this is like 10 times better. I'm going to give us just a teeny bit more torque here. Again, we're perfectly fine here as far as all limits goes. And we're basically going to fly over the top. And then we're going to turn around. And what you can't see here is a massive valley. And there's the world's longest runway for being in the middle of nowhere that we're going to have to basically fall out of the sky, turn around, and then safely land back down on. So again, not too difficult for us because, again, we're in a 208. We're not in a jet. But it's going to be kind of a neat little approach here. <laughs> Uh, Doug just points out the fact one does simply not fly into Mordor. And um, we, <laughs> well, we do. Is that a Beach 58? It is. You're going to have fun getting over the mountain, but if you're, if you're if you're above me already, you're not going to have any issues. Like our TBM buddy up at 14 grand, you're never going to have an issue. And I also appreciate how our Diamond 62 over there is already up to 10 grand. So you have no difficulty in that regard. Checking behind me real quick. Uh, we have Tichin. We have Simon taking a look. Is that what I think it is? Okay. All right. You have fun with that. And let's just take a look around and see if there's anything else kind of fun following us today. That looks pretty normal. Looks pretty normal. Pretty normal. I'm trying to figure out what that is. I can't tell that right away. Thought for half a second we had ourselves an extra one. All right. Let's pop back inside. Okay. Here's our destination. I'm going to go take a look at my torque real quick, make sure it looks good. So again, we could technically run this into the red, but that's really bad. So I'm going to give it just a teeny, teeny, teeny amount of power. And uh, those of you who might look down at this might freak out when they realize my mixture control has actually been at 50% the whole time. Now, uh, you're probably going, hey, wait a minute, what? So this aircraft, remember, this is basically going to change the amount of fuel going to the engine. This is going to be adjusting the idle of the engine. So it doesn't matter if I send the same amount of fuel. As a matter of fact, if I were to push this all the way forward like this, Notice what's going to happen is it's going to gently change uh, my actual torque value because now I've taken the idle and pushed everything up along with it. Now, when you do do your reversing, you have to remember both blue and red have to be fully floored. So that's an interesting little side track there. Oh, geez. That's a pretty dramatic shot. I should have done that. Whoa, boy. I guess I'm being a little too level here because uh, people are getting bored and uh, circling around. That fell wrong. Is that uh, doing pretty good there? Okay. While this is going on, I'm going to start preparing for my landing approach here. We'll be there in just a few minutes. Uh, what do we got here? Two minutes and ten seconds to my destination. That's not bad. All right, let's go down to the park button. We'll select our approach. Are there any fancy approaches into KZMC? And the answer is no. Ah, bummer. Press the park button. Boop. I guess we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, I think we are going to be doing some in-flight refueling of uh, Tai Chan right here. Whoa! 
Um, don't sink. Don't sink. Pull up. Pull up. It's a very appropriately named airplane there. I think they're going to be okay. Ah, it's no fun. <laughs> Here I am just sort of tooling around. You guys are all doing the goofy stunts. All right. Take a look out the window here. Of course, not one of the fun things to do. Do, 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 do. My favorite seat, by the way. Who's flying this thing? All right. Just checking my little odd. The timer here. I think we're doing okay. Like I said, we're going to be a little bit longer today. This is a pretty darn flight. I think Piku 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 just uh, fell off the planet there, which is a pretty good. <laughs> I knew we were going to get more Lord of the Ring comments. I should have made a joke about that, but I, I'm just not as savvy in Lord of the Rings. Uh, my understanding with Lord of the Rings is that where they shot, there was a couple places where because they were a nationally protected location, that they basically couldn't put their feet in like certain types of grasses and stuff. So they had to basically strategically place themselves when they were running to not hit anything that it was potentially endangered in the region. And again, uh, that, that could be a rumor, but I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing. Oh boy, look at the size of that. We are currently at 8,500. And then you can see the coastline. I think you can almost make out Australia if you really look really, really... No, that's not going to happen. It's a pretty long distance away. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. That wasn't cool. All right. Let's go ahead and prepare our next climb. 12 grand. Where can I open the cowl in your plane? I mean, in my plane. I'm not sure what you're asking, Rakan, there. I mean, uh, I think the little handle for this particular one is... Uh, where's the handle? I think the little latches are right here and here if you need to pop the nose open. <laughs> All right, there we are. I'm going to go ahead now. I'm pretty confident my uh, flight plan should take us right over the center of that. And believe it or not, our destination... Ooh, I pushed the wrong button. Our destination is right in this valley. So basically, as we hit this, we're going to come, whoa, and come flying back down there. <laughs> it's kind of like a miniature Mount Everest. I mean, could you imagine just chilling here and seeing like a couple little teeny tiny hikers just sort of hanging out on that right there as you're going, hi, look what I took. See, the difference between them and us, of course, is we have heat. Speaking of heat, by the way, we actually have a switch for that down here. Uh, it does not matter to us in the slightest, but in the real world, if we actually did need to worry about that, we do have a bleed air control. Remember, this is not a pressurized air. Whoa. Hello again. This is not a pressurized aircraft. So as a result, uh, yeah, you'd have to be kind of mindful of that. All right, we're going to go ahead and actually I'm gonna switch to heading hold mode here. And bring the nose just a teeny tiny bit off center. Go ahead and flip that on. I'm going to go ahead and get myself a little bit of vertical speed here. Go to flick mode. Set this to, uh, we'll do 120 knots, it'll be plenty. So on aircraft that use, uh, so the cow flaps are definitely for the purposes of uh, cooling your engine for sure. Uh, the difference is because this is a turboprop, most of our heat actually comes out this little pipe right here. That's our exhaust and actually gives us a little bit of extra thrust also. So you don't have to worry about overheating a turboprop. You also don't have to worry about it shock cooling. You don't have to worry about warming it up. It's an amazing piece of technology. All right, going up again. Oh boy. I'm glad I'm not landing on that one. See how everybody else is doing behind us? I got a couple people in formation here. Is that a taxi? Of course, in my country, taxis are yellow. So I know in different places, it obviously is different things. And Helter Skelter got himself a handy dandy jet. Me thinks that might be an F-15 and they're just having a fun time with us. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. All right, getting up there. I'm gonna go take a look at my settings here. Obviously increasing the RPM for the propeller does nothing for you in this particular aircraft. It just makes it a little louder. A little bit more, a little bit more. Whoop, too much. Fun fact, if you turn on the bleed air for the heat to keep us nice and warm in here, uh, this will spike as will this, because again, you're uh, making the engine work a little bit harder there. All right, there's our destination. I told you this thing was a little bit bigger than it looked. Ah, that's what it is. Yeah, I saw there was an F-15. I think there's a Eurofighter floating around somewhere. Um, I'm not much of a reviews person, but it would be kind of fun to do all, you know, jet fighters or something silly like that. And there we go. OK, 
okay, we're going to cross this, and then we have to take a right. And if you actually look really, 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 really hard, you can see exactly where we're going to be coming down to in just a few minutes. And the problem for us is we're basically going to have to fall off the sky in order to get down this way. This uh, lake, by the way, has a very unique name. I think this is not going to be enough. I'm actually going to increase my angle of climb a teeny tiny bit. It's going to cost me a little bit of speed, but I need to get this thing a little higher. There we go. Now notice the torque value starts to change as the load on the prop changes. Okay, now check this out. You can see all the way down to the coastline. And apparently, uh, New Zealand is a fan of pyramids. That thing looks like it'd be taller than most mountains from where I live. All right, Mount Cook, here we come. A little bit higher. Little, I actually need to come to my left a little bit here. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if I could get over it. I'm going to try. Oh, that's going to be the limit. Oh boy. Now the fun thing is if we could all land on the top of that thing and we could uh, quickly take a picture and try to go do that, but I think we're gonna take a picture when we get back down to the ground. But take a look at the glaciers. Yep, we made it. Yes. That was a little bit closer than I expected, but that's perfectly fine. Nothing bad will happen to us this time. All right, let's go do my little ski slopey thing here. Unfortunately, I have damage turned on, so I can't do the little woo and slide down the side of it. But I do want to say I've gotten to the top of Mount Cook in a turboprop, so that's just kind of fun. And we're just going to brush along the edge of this very gently. And we did it. Yes. All right, time to put this thing down on the ground. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the throttle all the way back to zero. And I'm going to take a nice, gentle, oh my gosh, this is almost starting to get a little bit of my height anxiety here. This is a bit of a dangerous angle. Okay. Continue that swing. Okay, so the lake on the left, by the way, is Tasman Lake, in case you're curious. The lake on the right is called Hooker Lake. I could totally be, I'm not sure, Asar. I don't know my geography of Lord of the Rings nearly as much. And again, New, Eng New Zealand has other things to offer than uh, New you know, Lord of the Rings trips, but I don't know. What I really need to do is find somebody from New Zealand when I do these things, but unfortunately for them, it's like 3.30 in the morning right now, so I don't think they'd want to do a live stream at this time. All right, going down. Man, this thing needs a lot of trim. So I'm glad I'm not a passenger in this aircraft because 3,000 feet per minute without pressurization, oh boy. Uh, blood's going to be shooting out of your nose before we get this thing on the ground. Whoa! Hello there. Okay, uh, and there's the red line. i to pull the nose up just a teeny tiny bit. Remember, the red line uh, is not a safe place to be. Um, unlike a propeller aircraft where you have the yellow region, we go right from green to red. So that's uh, something we're going to have to be kind of mindful of here. Right, let's zoom in and see if I can find the airport. Like I said, the airport is straight ahead. It's literally where this uh, little group of three buildings is kind of clustered. I believe the wind for us is coming out of this direction. So we're going to have to do a quick traffic pattern before we set this thing down on the ground. That's all right, though. Nothing new. There we go. Whoa. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, my true airspeed's 191 right now. Holy smokes. Elder Skelter has got the MB339, I think it was. And we're just going to continue descending just like this. Take a quick look. Yeah, it looks like we're going to do a mitten. We're just going to do a crosswind. Make it nice and simple. I believe that airport exists for the purpose of servicing this mountain. And again, I could be completely wrong. Ooh. Getting bounced around. Looks like somebody's meeting us there in a TBM. Awesome. Take a look behind me. See how everybody else is doing. It looks like everybody else is doing great. This has been more of a scenic trip, more than an informative trip. Not looking pretty good. Of course, I didn't do as nearly as much damage to my aircraft. Of course, I'm not on the ground yet, so you never know. Whoa. All right, there's the airport. That's plenty of room for us. Oh, look at the glaciers. That's amazing. It's almost like primordial. Now, one thing we should do someday is go to the Kamchatka Peninsula, which is in far eastern Russia. If you want to see what Earth looked like millions and millions of years ago, you can't do worse. All right, swinging down here. 
take a look at the little tiny uh, development there. I'm sure there's quite a bit of good skiing up here, too. I think I'm looking at the good skiing, actually. You know, we're going to go ahead and do ourselves a little crosswind. We already more than low enough. We'll go ahead and start bleeding off some of that speed. I know you should not be putting the aircraft in reverse when you're midair, but what you should do is bring up the RPM all the way, because if you intend to use the thrust reverser, you need to be at full RPM to do so. All right, got to enter into our nice handy-dandy downwind leg here. It looks like it's going to be a crosswind no matter which angle I come in at. Oh well, that happens. Oh, okay, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to go bring our two notches of flaps down. This thing has the world's most effective flaps, I swear. All right, kind going to balance this out. We're going to look for a speed of about 80 knots or so, but oh, that crosswind is something else. All right, let's just take a look down below. We have a couple of folks chilling. Awesome. Looks good. All right, I'm going to reduce my power, push the nose down. Whoa. One thing my understanding is with this particular aircraft in the real world is the controls are heavy. That's something that does not translate when you have the lightest spring on a uh, gunfighter joystick. I'm actually going to drop that last notch of flaps. I'm going to bring it out just a little bit wider. Looking for about 45, and we're going to go ahead and take our nice turn. This is a great demonstration, by the way, of uh, when to use your rudder pedals. When you're at low speed like this, you really have to stonk, stomp ugh, on that left rudder to go ahead and keep that nice and coordinated. Otherwise, you will be shifting all around the airplane as you turn. All right, line ourselves up. We're going to sign up pretty good. Flaps down. We'll go ahead and do our Giphy check. Giphy check, not correct. Oh, the yellow damper's been off the whole time. Hmm, that's probably my fault. All right. Hold the nose up a little bit. Yeah, it looks like that crosswind is uh, pretty nasty. Going a little slow here. Make sure it flaps are all the way down. I think I might actually do a stereo cockpit this time. Somebody's always got to showboat me. Careful, Peter, pull up! No, 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 not like that. Not like that. Oh! I should have been paying more attention to the ground, but unfortunately, apparently, I was doing a formation flight into the ground. Thrust reversers. And cancel out the thrust reversers. We're here! <laughs> this is such a cool place to park. I love this. All right, let's go get going. Okay, as usual, uh, when I reach the end, I always like to go kind of see how everybody else has got feeling. Uh, does anybody have any questions on anything? Again, today was going to be kind of a relaxed flight. I was looking for something extreme, especially after last time. Does anybody have any questions either on the aircraft? On uh, Again, I'm not a New Zealand expert. Apparently, we have one that does a much better job than I. All right, I'm going to go park it. we got to get everybody's favorite little photo here. I'm going to go pull myself off the road. It's not a road. It's a taxiway. Mm -hmm. Full stop. We're here. Got to get our standard photograph. <laughs> ah, he's got his flashers on. I always like to uh, judge people extremely based on the land. Yeah, my landing was absolute garbage. I came in much too fast. Um, you didn't need anti-ice for this at any point. There was no visible moisture. Keyword is visible moisture in temperatures uh, less than 10 degrees Celsius. So visible moisture is both cloud as well as uh, precipitation and stuff like that. Man, have we, uh, we've stormed this airport. Uh, one thing you would probably want to do is the inertial separator, but um, because of the way the uh, particular engine in this one is mounted, I don't mind so much the inertial separator. It's not like the TBM where you really have to kind of milk the thing. Okay, so uh, now we've hit the end. I'm going to kind of uh, pull myself out. Uh, the only thing we could do, of course, uh, for our little thing, I'll do my little flip that we go, oh, oh, oh somebody's coming in. I always like to do my little uh, kind of death flip, but uh, you folks uh, really did a great turnout today, and it was great following with everybody. I hope you guys had a nice flight. Again, I don't want to make it too long. I don't want to make it too short, stuff like along those lines. Um, is there any videos that you folks are looking forward to, or are looking for, I should say? Um, I'm going to be doing, like I said, those kind of private pilot pieces. I'm going to keep doing kind of like the weekly how to fly a certain plane thing pieces. And then there's going to be kind of the things that I'm sort of into. Uh, what server am I on? I'm on the East USA server. So if I hit escape and click here, you can see I'm always here. Because again, this is kind of where I hang out. Wow, that's a huge fallout. 
All right, so are there any videos that folks would like to see? Any specific questions I can answer real quick before I do my little uh, suicide dive into the ground? <laughs> That is a lot of expensive airplanes in one spot. All right, I'm not seeing anything, in which case, uh, time to do some damage to this poor aircraft here. <laughs> I'm give myself two notches of flaps. I think uh, interest in Microsoft Flight Simulator is down a little bit after the holiday as well. Yeah, not too bad of a flight, not too bad. Like I said, that was a little more mellow than our usual flights, but um, I think I'm trying to keep it interesting. All right, we're going to go plant this thing in uh, Mount uh, what was ah, Hooker Lake, just because. All right, give it a nice gentle tuck, and off we go one more time. Oh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't seem like there's any uh, requests. Awesome! Makes my life a little bit simpler. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the uh, fancy, like, airliners and stuff coming out like that. That's just going to be fun, or maybe some, like, military aircraft or something that we could really go and do, like, a deep dive into. But one thing that I kind of miss is that our navigation systems have almost gotten too simple, which almost makes it kind of difficult to do some of these things. All right, we're going to go find ourselves a uh, hooker lake over there. Uh, go ahead and line up. We'll do a uh, kind of NOE stuff here. Just have some fun with it. Why not? You know, I've got a very, very expensive and very, very uh, fragile aircraft, and we're going to do some stupid stuff with it, because I can. I, I was functional. I successfully landed the aircraft. I'm not worried about it too much. All right, I've got to stay nice and low here. <laughs> Thanks, evidence, please. I appreciate it. All right, I've got to stick it in the ground, and then we'll call it a day. Again, we had to start a little late because I had to run out and take care of some things this morning that was just never going to get done in that time if I didn't rush through them. I think uh, next time... I got uh, Actually, let me ask. Uh, does anybody have any ideas for where we should fly next time? Hmm, Elta Scout has got the right idea. Hmm, could you imagine operating an aircraft like this at this altitude? It's just, it's too slow for this. Haha, <laughs> this is always fun. And there's our destination! Oh, oh well, apparently there's uh, already a hole there from last time I landed in it. Alright, let's do my favorite maneuver. Nose up. Oh, sorry, passengers. I'm amazed this thing has that much energy. Left rudder. Oh, here we go. Oh, that didn't work right. <laughs> I think I tumbled it. Don't sink. Don't sink. Pull up. Pull up. Ah! <laughs> uh, no, Peter, I'm not flying in VR. If I did fly in VR, um, you guys would all have shut me off about an hour ago because how unstable it is. All right, folks, uh, have an absolutely wonderful day, afternoon, morning, or whatever it turns out to be. Uh, we'll see probably another two weeks. Uh, Australia's not a bad idea. I'm thinking about Israel also, but uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. Other than that, have an absolutely uh, wonderful rest of the day, and as always, uh, stay safe, enjoy.